All right, let's go to side one. Has of, something to do with Elvis, the Red the West. Elvis Seance. Yeah. And then when we come back, we want to talk about A, our upcoming guest, and B, some very big, exciting news in the Crag, Cragiverse. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go anywhere. But first, this is some bullshit. This is the Elvis Seance. And you guys decide. Was it real? I was think Elvis would have been very annoyed at the release of this record. I really do. Oh, he would have, absolutely. Because it would have went against all his religious Elvis beliefs. Elvis was very religious. Yeah. He would not have appreciated this. I don't think Elvis would come back and talk to anybody. No. No. All right. Here is the Elvis Do you seance. think Prince would have heard at a seance? El- Prince didn't like doing interviews when he was alive. <laughs> Good point. I don't think he'd want to talk to anybody now that he's gone. So now that you guys didn't do what you were supposed to do during a Houdini seance, once again, how do you do it? You join hands by putting your thumbs on the ta- putting your hands on the table. Your thumbs touch each other, and your pinkies should touch the pinkies of the people next to you. You have to form a circle that shall not be broken, except one foot that's going to be playing footsies with Carolyn. <laughs> As it always. has to be dark. There has to be one single yes. candle in the middle of the table. And you just have to wait for somebody to be possessed and start talking. And have Grayson Hall to overact. Yes. Oh, I, Barnabas, I don't, <laughs> I don't know. All right. Here is Elvis Presley, the Seance album, part one. Stay tuned for more Crag Live after this. I'm speaking to Teresa Carey, who is the actual lady who's going to take part tonight. Teresa, could you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, what would you like to know? First of all, how old you are? I'm 30. And so how old, how old were you when nine. you were first an Elvis fan? I was nine, nine. Yeah, yeah. And you became interested. Why? Why? I don't know. It's difficult to say why. I was at a friend's birthday party playing Pass the Parcel, and I won a record, and it was an Elvis record. So literally from that moment onwards to the present day... Yeah, they, it was. A, I was going to outgrow it. It was a stage I was going through. My parents said, oh, you'll outgrow it, you know, when you're nine. And uh, when we tell you about this later on, you'll say, oh, I never said that and I never did that. But uh, as you can see, I've uh, not outgrown it. Would you say from it. becoming an ordinary Elvis Presley fan, if there is such a thing, when did you actually become what might be termed as a fanatical fan? I think when I went to see him, really. Because in my mind... I don't know, the way I'd built it up, nobody, I suppose, really could be as good as, you know, I thought, that was it. But when I went to see him, that was it then. I mean, I just lived for when I was going to go back the following year. Well, he never came to England, so you must have gone to America. I went to the States to see him, yeah. In 1972? 19... 72. Onwards. This must have cost quite a lot of money. I mean, you oh, didn't yeah, have you a rich sit... aunt or an uncle that provided the finance. Well, my, no, my mother paid for my first trip because she said... Uh, they really got a bit fed up with uh, Elvis, 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 really. And they said, you know, if you were to go and see him, the way you've built him up to mm-hmm. be, you'll be disappointed, but you'll get it out of your system and maybe you'll lead a normal life. So she paid for my first trip to go and I went. And uh, <laughs> So they thought it? a normal life would, you would be without but Elvis, in, but a normal in life you would with Elvis. Yeah, they yeah. felt that... Uh, you know. So how many times did you eventually get to see Elvis? I saw 40 shows. Over a period of... Six years. Six years. But I saw him coming in and out of the gates and uh, things like this, you know, chasing him to the airport, one thing and another. What was your basic opinion of him at that time? It's unbelievable. I mean, the first show that I saw, when they, they don't announce him, there's just the stage, it's all blacked out, and, you, and it's 2001, he's playing... And really, your heart goes bang, bang, bang. You think that's good, you know it's going to stop. And at that precise moment, just before he comes out, you don't want him to come out because you think this is going to be it. You know, I know you're speaking the in the present tense. Yes, well, Elvis is still with us. Now that's an interesting thing because that's a very relevant point tonight. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen here because no, I'm neither do I. Well, <laughs> it's just that that might be relevant as we move on into the evening. Yeah, to uh, me as to all of us, really, Elvis is uh, still with us. Okay, so we've ascertained that you are wholeheartedly. What could be turned one of them? Well, I'm normal, you see. It's the others that aren't. Well, that's a very good thing to say. <laughs> what I'm trying to get to is the fact that you must represent what is termed 
the fanatical Elvis freak, which not I don't freak. No, I don't no. mean that in a condescending fan. way. Yes. A, a fan yeah. to the yes. utmost extreme, yes. yeah. which is. We why, TCE. That's why you, our, I believe you were club. asked to come tonight. Yes. Yeah. When you were asked to come, why did you say yes? First of all, I said no. Oh, oh no. But then, it's, I've always been interested in, you know, I'd like to believe in this. Well, I believe in life after death. And if there's any way that we could get through to Elvis, then I'd love it. So you think if there's anybody on this earth that's strong enough, willed to achieve this, that you think you're very much possible to do that? I've got that an way. open mind about tonight. It's not that I'm going to sit here and think, yes, definitely, because I'm not. I mean, with all the questions, if you get all the answers to the questions and they're right, then definitely I'm going to be... Uh... That's an interesting point, because you know certain things about Elvis, I believe, that not many well, people know. It's difficult. I mean, I'm sure tomorrow morning I'll wake up and I'll think of all the questions I should have asked her. And that I didn't. This is Carmen. Carmen, yes. yeah. But because when you, you know, you just sit down with a pad and a pencil and you think, now what can I ask? You don't want all the normal questions that she could read up in all the different books. There's been so many magazines and books since that she could just read it all up. So I want some questions that, you know, that uh, she couldn't know the answer unless she is actually in contact with Elvis. Well, it's 9.30 now on a Tuesday evening. Yes, and, and she's not arrived yet. We're not, well, what I'm trying to say is that neither of us have actually met her yet. No. If she walked in, we wouldn't know her. We could pass her in the not. street and we wouldn't That's know right. her. That's right. It's two years since Elvis died. It seems to be going on e eternally. Well, we say we're TCE eternally, and we will. TCE being in what? Taking care of Elvis. Harry, what, basically, do you think is going to happen? Well, to be honest, Stuart, I've got absolutely no idea. Well, as I know, I'm sure you do too, this is... I don't think ever been tried before. Do you know of any events like this that's happened before? As far as I know, I don't believe it's ever been done before in this country. No. Personally, um, sitting here right now, Stuart, I'm a non-believer uh, and I'm a cynic. Yeah. As I am, because I do not know what will happen tonight. I'm intrigued mm. to find out. Uh, I'm an Elvis fan as much as you are. Mm -hmm. But why do you think that tonight will be different to other nights where this might have taken place with other people in the past? Why do you think this might be more successful? Well, I think because we have a lady from the Elvis Presley fan club who knows more about Elvis Presley than I think Elvis Presley's parents. Secondly, because the medium, Carmen Rogers, is a genuine person. Uh, I've seen her perform, and I was very impressed. I don't know what we're going to see, whether we're going to hear things, see things, smell things, taste well, things, or what. Here's the greatest thing. That I, I've come here as an independent, the same as yourself, even though I'm partner of Barry in Shadow Records. Mm -hmm. Matt, I have no idea whatsoever what's going to happen. I assume, Stuart, that we'll have to wait and see. I believe you're just here as a layman tonight. That's right, and yeah, purely to take it all in. Could you tell us actually who you are? Uh, my name's John Brennan. And you're just here to observe? That purely as an outside observer. Basic question, are you an Elvis fan? I like Elvis, but I wouldn't call myself an Elvis fan as such. OK, and on the spiritualist side of things, have you ever witnessed anything like this before? Or, no, I haven't, no. Or, in fact, believed in anything like this before? No, I'm totally open-minded about it. I wouldn't say I was a believer and I wouldn't say I was a disbeliever. So what, what do you roughly imagine will happen tonight? I'm totally clueless. I don't even know the schedule of events. I don't know what to expect at all. Have you ever, as much as, had your palm read or been no, told no. life stories or anything no. like that? No. And do you have enough faith in Carmen tonight to produce some sort of results? Well, I'm hoping so, yeah. But you never met Carmen, have you? No, I haven't, no. The one thing that I will say is that I cannot guarantee results at all. There may be something, there may be nothing. And that's how um, I stand. The reason why you're in what we could call a circle is that there's certain power generated, psychic power you all generate, and obviously, to a certain extent, I shall utilise that. And um, whilst I'm trying to sort of get into some communicating link, which is a mental link, this is a mental mediumship that I am performing, hopefully, not physical mediumship. Uh, with physical mediumship, you would have the lights out. I don't require the lights out. Now, 
it's possible that there may be what is known as um, a very strong overshadowing or controlling influence that may come. I do not go into trance. I'm merely influenced, overshadowed. It may happen that way, or I may only be able to use clairvoyance or clairaudience, which is to see the personality who's communicating or hear the personality who's communicating. I have to get into that frame of mind. In other words, I have to form the link between the so-called two worlds. My feelings uh, after you suggested this was that, fine, okay, we'll see if it can be done. But it's an obvious thing. They're all right. You've asked for a particular person, a personality, a particular personality. The proof may well come in the answers that are given or the information that is given. That's the only proof really, uh, when all's said and done, I'm hoping to be able to prove um, proof of survival, uh, which is the fact that a person has continued to live. You're all interested in the one person, the fact that he may still exist in some other form of life. It is exactly 10 o'clock on a Tuesday evening. There are 15 people in the room ten of which are reformed in a semicircle directly in front of Carmen. This is at her request as she seems to require this to generate the full power of the mental communication that she's trying to build up at the moment. She has come here tonight from giving lectures Another thing I was going to say, on spiritualism. During these things Try to understand that whatever information may come, and I feel that the fellow's here, and I get it very strongly, but remember that he's going to try and work through me, therefore you're going to get a strong element of me in it as well. So don't expect to sort of get everything um, correct, because it's got to filter through me through my subconscious, into my mind, and out through. So it's going to be me, mixed up in all of this, all right? So if you can understand this, okay? I feel that, I feel that there is this, that he's here. And he's probably getting rather annoyed with me because um, I keep sort of breaking in on this. And while I'll try to describe the sensation I'm getting with him. I know very little about him, but I, I assume that it's you who knows a great deal. Would you know th things like habits, um, different habits that he would have? Because I'm getting a sense of an almost like a nervous, nervous condition that he would sometimes, when he was excited, he would be almost like couldn't stop his fingers moving. And I feel that he was, when he was working himself up to, to, to do something, he almost stuttered. Uh, I don't know whether he was capable uh, or... I feel this sense of highly nervous, and I get this almost as though he had to... Mentally, before he went to perform or do something, he would have to sort of go of himself to stop himself stuttering. Would you understand that and know that? Because I don't know, I literally don't know any of this because I, and I feel that he probably had something in his hands he would clutch hold of and I've got him, it's almost as though sometimes his fingers went right down to the quick. He was so nervous, he was so, and I feel tears here. Uh, I feel he was a highly emotional man and, God, I feel, oh, goodness me. And he had a terrible temper. <sighs> terrible temper. Well, I, 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 I get a lot of I get a lot of difficulty here. This man suffered with terrible headaches, particularly before he died. Splitting headaches. Terrible bad headaches. 
In fact, if he could have died then and there, I, it, it's not a migraine, it's some other sort of, I don't know, he's taken a lot of drugs, not drugs, um, LSD, but medicated drugs, but there's something that gave me the most terrible headache. Because I'm getting these conditions that he was suffering before he died. <sighs> All right, okay, because I feel he's... He seems to be trying to tell me who's got the music for the performance, because there is a new piece, or not a new piece of music, it's an old piece of music that's been modernised and is going to be used at a performance, I think, on the anniversary of his passing. Who's got the music? Somebody's got it, and somebody's been scoring bits out of it. Do you know of this? They're, that's right, but somebody's altering part of it, he says, and he doesn't like that. He didn't like his music being, his, his arrangements being altered. Somebody's altering them. Somebody's altering them. And who is it? I don't know. I, I hear a name like Lenny or something like that. He's, he seems to be wanting that the music be left as it is because... That's funny. Has there been an argument about who's going to sing the song? Sing that piece. There's been an argument between who... There are one of two people. Could that possibly be the film that has been recently made about Elvis? Yeah, well, that one... There's an argument about it. Well, there was an actor played the part and a different singer sang the song. No, I... He, and they argued about that. No, I, because he said... That's been recorded and done. No, I... That was You know, and... and, and it's not, it's not him. Recently, there's been some further award, award, almost like a posthumous thing. And then it is all relating to his anniversary, but it's actually already arrived before it. Some, I don't know, it's a medal that's been struck or something that's been struck specially for him. And it's already either come into somebody's hands now, right? Right. And there is something that's uh, that's wrong on this thing. It's got uh, this. I don't know whether there's a spelling that's wrong. Something that's wrong on it. it may only be a letter. But he's just saying it's, it, it's come. He's pleased about it. About yeah, he's pleased about it. He's pleased about it. And on the back. It's some, I don't know whether there's flowers or a flower. Something like a stamped on it. A flower, yes? Some, I don't know what it is. It looks like a, um, like a not Tudor rose. Is but, this in Tudor? Eh? Is this in Tudor? I don't know what, I don't know what that is, but all I, all I get is a, it looks like it's stamped on the back of it. Because he's, he's interesting. And there's two, there's, I don't know, it's 2,000 um, invitations or something gone out. Is there something like that? 2,000 invitations gone out. There was something happening in August, sure. That's right. why I wonder whether this was cheaper or not. Yeah, because it's some, you know, he's very pleased about this. But he's, he's saying, you're not really doing what I wanted. And he would have, he... I don't know whether he left some sort of instructions, not what would happen after his death, but whilst during the time he was ill. They were never carried out, were they? Is this so? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Any? This was never carried out. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. He said, why not? Why not? Um, uh, it would have made some money would have made some money. And he says, um, if it can be carried out, he said, use the money to do something worthwhile, not spent on monuments, because there's another one going to be built, he says. He wants it spent on something worthwhile. He wants it spent on something worthwhile. And I don't know who Jack is. Jack or Jackie. Jack or Jackie. There's a youngster. I don't know, it's a, a child, that, a youngster who's, who's not well. A young, a, 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 I don't know, it's a boy of about three years old, three, four years old. I don't know what it is, but... God, I'm thirsty. 
Where is it? Yeah. Thanks, love. God. He used to, well, I don't know whether he used to drink a lot, but he used to drink before he ever went to do anything. I don't know what it was he drank. It was something weird. It wasn't drink as in al alcohol. It was some... Gatorade. That's it. That's right, because as I say, it wasn't alcohol, but you drink pints of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird taste. Gatorade, yeah. Whatever it is, it's got a funny smell too. Is it like a, like a, not a treacle? Um, what the hell is the smell? I've got a funny smell on my nose. <laughs> Sorry that it seems to be going from back and forth, but there was an autopsy um, on his body. And I don't even know what he died of. I only know that there's a lot of fluid in his body. But there was also something found in the throat here. There's something about the throat here. And his, I don't know whether his voice was going. There was something, it was affecting his, his voice. Do you know, would you know about no. this? No. Something in the throat there. And he sort of harked back to that again. And I've got his, his feet terribly big. I got that before. All right, okay. All right, we got the right. Um, you brought something of his with yes. you? Yes. Would you like them? You have? They yes. belong to him? No, he's just saying. You brought something of his. He said you brought something. Um, you didn't get, old, get some of his hair once, did you? <laughs> nearly. <laughs> he nearly. That's what it was, was Very it? Very close. <laughs> Very, yeah, right, because he's, he's getting hold of his hair here. Right, I, I, I know I'm still talking. If you've got a question to ask, please ask it, because I don't know how long we can hold, hold on to him. I'd like to ask, what kind of magazines did Elvis read? I don't know that he read that many magazines, quite frankly. I don't think he read a great deal at all. Um, he wasn't a great reader, and yet he, he, he very much wanted to know more. I feel he had a whole load of books in his, in his place, but very few that he ever actually read. Um, would, this, would you understand that? I know that he may have had what I call the trade papers mm -hmm. around, but I mean, only flick through those, but uh, would you understand that? Okay, so remember at the beginning of the show when we told you that our whole week had been nothing but crooks, criminals, fraud, rattlesnakes, and science fiction? Look, if I'm what, sniffing, what's... I'm not trying to be Ike Turner. <laughs> so, My nose is running. So. so we already went through the crick, crooks, crooks, criminals, and fraud, and yeah. we already went through the rattlesnakes. So... What could we possibly be referring to when we're talking about science fiction? Well, L. Ron Hubbard talked <laughs> about Dianetics right. in, in his book, you know. Right. Uh, and, and we're a big fan of Quantum Leap. Yes, and yeah. Doctor Who. And Doctor Who. So, uh, one time I had a doctor that thought he was Matt Smith. <laughs> he, had a, he, he asked if he could put a, a shot of cortisone in my leg. Because I, I was starting to not be able to walk. I'm like, sure. He brings out the, He got all excited. First of all, he looked like Matt Smith. He did. He brought out this leather case, like the dude from Reanimator or something, or Doctor Who, and opened it up, brought out this huge ass needle. Hypo. Big hypo. Yeah, and he was all excited to do that. So He was twirling it around like he was like juggling a coin between his knuckles. I'm yeah. like, okay, can we just get this done? But I was assured because he looked like Matt Smith. Yeah. But then not really because I never liked Matt Smith. Smith. Although we liked Matt Smith more than Jody, so there's yeah. that. Okay, so what could it possibly be with science fiction? Well, we had to share this story with you guys because we were cracking up laughing this past. The cats are playing ball. <laughs> this past week, because Terry had been referred by his cancer doctor to see an endocrinologist, and he said that it was very important that Terry see this endocrinologist 
before we figure out a treatment plan for the uh, tumor that's in his neck, which is called a paraganglioma. I tumor. thought it was a perichomonganglioma. <laughs> but uh, we were happy to know that once again, and we've had two doctors do this. They're not really calling it cancer. The doctor even said some people call that cancer, but not like, oh, that's cancer. It's just like, it, it's maybe cancer, maybe not cancer. And he said the majority of the <laughs> perichomal gagliolas uh, is, is benign. Why are you talking like Coke Shell? <laughs> the perichomal gagliolas. And, and he said that he really, he didn't say it was a cancer, but he's talking like it's not because nobody really said it was. Right. And so, he's just saying it's a tumor, and of course it's in my throat, which is dangerous. It could it's, choke me. Well, it's by the carotid artery. Yeah, too. I have a trach in there to keep it from closing my windpipe because you know it's, it grows or it moves. But they're worried about the fact it's taking up space in my throat because it ain't supposed to be there. So we had to meet with this endocrinologist before we figure out a treatment plan with the cancer doctor, and <clears throat> we were doing telemed. So basically, he wanted me to monitor Terry's blood pressure, take his blood pressure twice a day for a week, make a log, send him a log. And basically, what the endocrinologist does is that they decide if there's anything that's going on as a result of the paraganglioma tumor that could be affecting other things in his body, like his blood pressure, his heart rate, things like that. Well, I understand when you talk about it first. He said that they, they give off hormones, the uh -huh. tumor does, and sometimes... It'll make you be aggressive, uh, like hormones or like steroids do. And he wanted to know if I'm getting a sudden burst of energy, like getting up and just wanting to clean the house. I'm like, no. <laughs> if anything, I'm getting tired. I'm not getting. He, he was surprised to hear because some people, it makes them hyperactive or gives them heart. <laughs> he's, he's doing a seance, this is what he's doing. He's playing a tambourine. <laughs> This is hilarious. He's doing a tamper. We're hearing from Elvis right now, okay? Little little Elvis, okay, our little little oh, one. Oh no, is... that's that's Ho Ho. Oh, is it a Ho Ho? I literally saw Ho Ho flying through the air a minute ago. But it's weird we talk about the tambourine and he's just ding ding ding. ding. <laughs> but you know, and, and I said like I'm not getting heart palpitations or anything. So he said that once again, because it's not giving off hormones, more than likely it may not be cancer. Right. So we're like, okay, at the end of the... And he said it did not cause the real cancer I had that they cured. No, he said it had nothing to do with the lymphoma. Um, and he said that it seemed like that tumor was just taking up space. It wasn't releasing hormones. It really wasn't doing anything. So he said, you know, I'm releasing you as my patient. There's really no need for you to come back and see me anymore unless, you know, future treatments, they determine that it needs to. Hey, you don't want a big growth in your neck. I mean, that, that's... It's right. rough. So we're like, okay, candy. cool. Like, thank you, doctor. Yeah. And we went on about our day. So I the, said he wouldn't need to talk to us right. more. Right. So the next, done. the next day, I get a call <laughs> from from a person from the scheduling department who she calls and she goes, hi, this is so-and-so from, you know, the scheduling department. And I was calling um, to schedule an appointment for Terry Dufault. And I said, okay, for what? They shouldn't let the cast out of the studio, you know. Yeah, I know. Uh, and I said, for what? And she said, well, for um, genetic counseling. What? And I was like, what? And she goes, yes, for genetic counseling and now genetic testing. She goes, now we can do the appointment through telemed. I go, wait, 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 wait. And she goes, no, well, we can do the t appointment through telemed through like Zoom. And I go, wait, wait, wait. I go, what is that? And she goes, well, Zoom is a video conferencing software. I said, no, 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 no. I know what Zoom is. It's like what is say what is a computer? <laughs> what is genetic counseling? What is, what is this? I said, this is the first we're hearing of this. And she said, uh, well, well I, 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 she couldn't tell me. She didn't know. She goes, I'm just from the scheduling department. I'm, I'm really not equipped to explain it to you. And I said, well, who, ref who referred this? And she said, well, it was your endocrinologist. And I said, well, this The one is, we were done with? Yeah. He said he didn't need to I said, do any more with this me? This is news to me because we just met with him yesterday and he released my father as a patient, said that we didn't need to see him anymore and that my dad was good. So I said I did not hear from him that he was putting in a referral for genetic counseling or testing or anything like that. Whatever the hell that is. So she's like, okay, well, um, I said, you know what, just never mind. I, I will contact the doctor. 
So I contacted the doctor and I said, what is this? Like, I don't, I don't understand. This is what you told us. This is what they're now calling me Meanwhile, about. Ho-Ho's going, hey, Mr. Tambourine <laughs> Man. So the doctor gets back to me and he said, well, he said, um, yeah, as far as seeing me on an ongoing basis as Terry's endocrinologist, <clears throat> he said he does not need to see me anymore. He said, however, after we got done with the doctor's appointment... He said, I was going through Terry's record a little bit more, and I realized that Terry had never gone in for genetic testing. And he said, um, and I think it would be beneficial for him to go in for genetic testing, which means he would meet with a genetic counselor, and they would talk about the test and then set up the test. And he said, basically, the reason for this... First word I don't like is counselor. Yeah. He said, the reason for this is twofold. He said, one, because... Uh, well, he said the reason for it was basically to determine, the main reason is to determine if Terry got paraganglioma tumor because it was passed to him in, a, in a, the paraganglioma gene, which could have come from his mom or dad. And he said that the reason that that's important is because he said that, one, it could affect how they might decide to treat Terry's paraganglioma. But he said also... It's vitally important. All right, now wait for it. Also, <laughs> this is listen up. He said it's vitally important because if the gene was passed to Terry, then Terry would have the gene, which means that if Terry has future children, the gene could be passed to them. And also, the gene could have already been passed to me. And he said, in fact, you should be tested as well, Tiffany, because if you have the gene, then you could pass it to your children. So he's suggesting... And hopefully he means separately, because I don't think we're, we're Leon, <laughs> Leland, Leland, and and uh, Laura, Laura Palmer. Palmer. Uh, then that, you know, father and daughter yeah, could have children yeah. together. But he's suggesting I'm going to have more kids. I'm 66 fucking years old. Okay, and <laughs> you're basically, not the one that has to be young to have children, though. Semi crippled, and you're going to have children, and you're like Mary fucking Warnoff, <laughs> and and you said you will never have children. No, so. We were la- this so is he's what- suggesting we have a sex life. We were laughing because this is why, this is what we thought was so ridiculous. Because here's my thing. I'm like, well, first of all, how does it, why does it matter if Terry got it from his mom and dad? Because the point is, Terry has it. Like, there is no pre preventative anything because Terry already has a paraganglioma tumor. There is Except- nobody in my family that ever had this tumor, no. ever. Second of all... If Terry did have the gene, and he already passed it to me, I'm going to be 40 this year. That means I already got the gene. There is nothing that can be done about that. There was that. only two other times. And only two other times. i got to say this. Sorry to, to interrupt you. I got uh, a sexual disease one time. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, no, don't get excited. It's- Come to find out. And they had to treat me. What was it called? It wasn't syphilis. Gonorrhea. Or, gonorrhea. I got gonorrhea like, you know, <laughs> VD is for everybody. Yeah. You want to know how I got it? On the operating table when they took my gallbladder out. Yes. It wasn't from getting it the fun way. It was <laughs> <laughs> from a dirty operating room. Then there was another time, okay, that I've got a skin disease and neural, God bless his soul, saw that. It was like, ooh, and all that. But I've got a bunch of patches on my skin. It's like, what's that skin disease they talk about? Cindy Lawford says she has it. So. Um, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, it's the skin disease, there's patches. A dry it. skin of heal up and stuff. Psoriasis. Psoriasis. And I went to a, a nurse practitioner or something, and she said, it looks to me like it's gonorrhea. So no, her, she said herpes. Oh, herpes. <laughs> so I, I had syphilis that they treated you with had medicine. gonorrhea. And, <laughs> Okay, gonorrhea. And, and that, now they're suggesting it's herpes or syphilis. And, you know, I'm like the Virgin Mary, okay? I don't have a lot of sex. I hung out with a few hookers, but not that much to where they're making me sound like I'm Ron Jeremy. Right. Okay, come on. Well, and so. I, and now I'm supposed to have children. Well, and then for on my behalf, I was thinking, okay, so. All of a sudden, now he wants, he's overstepping his bounds. God love him, but he's overstepping his bounds yeah. and telling me to get tested. He's not my doctor, but he's telling me to get tested because he's concerned about me. And I'm thinking, okay, there's two points I have here. Well, three points. One, 
if you had the gene and pass it to me, that happened 40 years ago. Ain't nothing can be done about that. Two, um, they want to know if I have the gene so that I should be aware in case I need to get tested for cancer. Well, yeah, I need to get tested for cancer. Whether I have the gene or not, I already know I'm predisposed to cancer because, um, like, four people in my bloodline have already had cancer. And then the third part is if they're worried about me giving the gene to my children, unless it can be given to my cats, they don't have to worry about that because <laughs> there's not going to yeah, be children. Yeah, and they want you... To go to your own genetic counseling. No, I'm not going to genetic counseling. I don't know if I am. It's just creepy. Well, you need to let me know because he's asking. There was nothing <laughs> he so... Said, he said, let me know, and he followed up again today. There, and, there and was asked. nothing so embarrassing. There was one time... You with, know if you go to genetic counseling, especially if it's in Zoom and we're not there in person... I'm you just going to be laughing. We're going to be laughing and making fun of the lady through the whole thing. There is no way we're going to take this seriously. I now, don't even know why we did it. Me and my uh, whore ex-wife uh, went to the health department just for shits and giggles one time. Here we were married. We were trying to have you... And they gave us a shitload of condoms, and they gave us this cream shit, which was fun in its own because it just billowed out, if you know what I mean. Uh, but but it was just stupid, and it, but it became embarrassing. And this is embarrassing. It, it's like now, I'm I'm a player, you know. I'm going to have kids, and I'm not. I am not. And making, I had two sexual diseases without having sex. I'm not. How making, lucky can I be? I am not making fun of or downplaying the importance of getting screened and being, you know, uh, proactive in getting screenings for cancer so that you can be preventative and you can detect it early and yeah. have it. If treated. you actually have sex, yeah. Well, no, I'm just talking about cancer screenings in general. Nobody's going to have sex with a guy in a wheelchair with a damn trach in his throat. But this, this just seems to me like it's not necessary. Because They're doing it to get money. You, you already have the paraganglioma. There's the pericomal ganglioma. <laughs> there's nothing you're going to find out from genetic testing that is going to change what you have or allow you to prevent what you have because you already have it. What like, are you going to do? Like, give me a test to find out I'm like African American or something? I don't know. Because they want to know if it came from your parents. Your parents have been gone for have years. Have been gone for years, and they never tested them, and we don't have medical records for them. There's no I do DNA know samples. They never had those tumors. Okay. It's just, it's like, but we were laughing. Cancer, we we're yes. like, this is some stem cell cryogenic bullshit. Yeah, that's what this is. It's insane. It, it is. You know what Elvis would say? <laughs> it's a bullshit. Are we going back to part two of that? Or? We are. Let's go to part two, uh, and then we'll come back and wrap up the show. We still have that big news for you about stuff that's going on with the station, so stay it's tuned. It's going to change things for you as a listener. It is. Stay tuned, and we will talk And I about might be predisposed to give you my uh, biogenic, hereditary <laughs> sex disease, sex madness. <laughs> The D is for everybody. You've got the genetic clap. Yes. That's what it is. I've got the crazy sex crazy. Sex madness. All right. Let's go to the Watch them damn Edwin uh, Edwin movies. (laughs) Let's go to part B of the Elvis Seance. We'll be back with the rest of Crag Live in just a few minutes. What I call trade papers around, but I mean, don't you flick through those, but would you understand that? Yeah, nothing. I don't sort of feel there's anything that he was mad keen on. Really? What was the Christmas present Elvis gave Lisa in 76 that she still uses now when she's at Graceland? A car to me. So, it's, well, it's silver, but I, I, all I could see was a car. It looks like a silver car. Or a something silver car? Silver car. Silver car, but it's, well, it was um, a golf like buggy. Yeah, it looks silver. A golf buggy. Silver. Was it in silver? Yeah, was that the... Uh, yeah, because it just sort of... little buggy. Could just sort of see like this a, thing what down we would there. call a golf cart. She still, yeah, she still drives it around. Cause it's she's, silver. It's only 11 now, yeah. 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 Has he got anything he wants to tell us, rather than us? Well, I think... <sighs> I think his main... 
feeling is trying to... So what is being done is great, but perhaps there's so much more that could be done, not so much in, all right, should we say in monuments, but in, in doing something for people. There... Does it know about a tractor? Oh, wait a minute. There's some money's been set up for some sort of hospital or a clinic or something. There is some, something being set up for either a clinic or medical clinic. Would you know? But there's some the foundation or other being started. A heart Institute. That's it, because he's saying that's good. But there should also be something where, uh, for children as well, for, for, you know, he, in fact, all his money he would like to see going towards things like hospitals, but where it would be free. Mm -hmm. And he's coming in because he said even that one isn't going to be free. He said the people who need it aren't going to get the benefit. Mm. And he said, if there's somebody about his mother. Is he with his mother? Yeah, but he said if she had had treatment so much earlier on, and if it, it's going well, if, if she could have had the treatment free, she would probably be alive today. He said, my money that's being um, spent should be for, for people who can, who can benefit, not the ones who've got the money, he says, the ones who haven't got the money. That's what he, he feels is important. He's just mentioned about his father. Um, so he's, he's saying something that... We've got it all square now. We've got it all square between us. There was some, I don't know whether it was disagreement or something, where they, though they may have been um, together in some respects, there was some division between them. Did you know about this? Because there was a mm. division between them, but it's all square now. And they're all happy together? Well, as happy as one can be, you know, trying to sort a few things out, you know. Um, but he's... He's saying, we're coming to some understanding, and he said and it's about, it was a lot of time wasted, a lot of time wasted. Was like, oh, God, he's going to all motion again. It doesn't help. Um, he, he cried and cried and cried at the death of his mother. Did he feel sad when he left? Yes, yes, because... Now he realises he could have done more. Um, he's left the job unfinished, virtually. He feels he's left it unfinished. And he said, like that particular recording that was left literally half made. One that was left, it was half, half finished. Well, it certainly wasn't completed. He said there's something that was half finished. He says, like, that's what it's like. I just, all I can do now is hope that through perhaps interested people, which you'll start to, um, not so much, all right, it's great. He loves the idea that you like his music and what he did, but he wants you to do something, um, you know, constructive with it all. Can he talk about his family relationships? He loved, he, he, he loved his family. I get the sense he cares about the family very much, but as a child, as a, as a youngster, he, it's almost as though he, he, he was on his own a lot. I feel as though he had to make his own way. Um, and yet family is terribly important to him. He doesn't really want to talk a great deal uh, about um, his youth. Um, I feel almost as though there was times when he got so emotional, so worked up that he, I don't know, when he nearly killed somebody. I feel that uh, it was by, I don't know, by sheer luck or, or what, that he, he, he got away. But, you know, he didn't kill him, but he was as near, damn it, to killing him. Um, how does he feel about religion? 
I live here about religion. Religion? I feel he was a religious man. He believed in God. I believe in God. And there, there is a God. I'm... There is a God, yes, yeah, yeah. Where the TCB ring is now? It's in a safe or in a bank. Who's got it? Who's got it? Who's got the ring? Who's got the ring? It's a member of the family. Yes. The woman. And what happened actually on that day, August the 16th? You don't really want a description, do you? Yes. Oh, God. I just, as I say, I've got this blind, the blinding head pain and the feeling of almost choking. And I, oh, all right, so you get stagger, staggering, it, almost as though he was drunk, but he wasn't. But I've just got this terrible, heavy, awful feeling. I feel so was sick. I don't like it. I've got not shaved. I just got this. In fact, you might even have just got up. I just feel, and I've got a dressing gown on and that sort of thing, but, and I don't know which part he got partly dressed or what, but I feel as I'm partly dressed. Did it happen very quickly? Was it all over quickly? Uh, went into an unconscious state, but I think he would have been still ticking over in that state for a little while. He... Something about the door slamming. Something about the door slamming. About the door. All right, don't keep repeating it. Sorry. Um, a door slamming. Uh, a walloping great door knob on the front of the door. Mm. I just hear this. And whether there's bells ringing, it's as though he, I feel he may well have sort of gone out of the body or died, as you would put it. And you could hear these things sort of in the background, bells ringing. And I don't know what this door knocker. Can't hold on much longer. Um, what does he want to happen to Graceland now? Graceland. It was. They must do with it as they wish. It is theirs. It is theirs. They, they, they must do with it, and I feel that re would relate to the uh, family, you know, his wife. They must do with it what they wish to do with it. You know, we have no, he has no, obviously no jurisdiction over it. But there are either trusts or something set aside that can be used in another direction. There are either two funds or something like that. Something about two funds, and one can be used for other things, but the other fund is family, is, is for family. How would he like people to remember him by? As he was. The good parts. How else? How else? They've come to the end of it, I think. Here's a way. I have with me now one of the engineers here tonight, whose name I do not know. Stuart. Yeah. Stuart. Hello, I'm Stuart as well. Hi, Stuart. Yes. But 
you, I suppose, must be as independent an observer as anyone tonight. Yes. Uh, because you're on the technical side of things. How have you seen things so far? Uh, well, I thought it was interesting, actually, because I've never um, seen anything like it before. I mean, there were certain things, obviously, which um, she didn't know about, which came out, and obviously. For instance, the um, Silver Gulf. I yes, think it was mentioned. Right. I mean, that was. Uh, Which is a most unusual object, anyway. That's right, yes. So that was interesting, but. Um, I would agree, in as much as uh, there were certain things very much left to doubt and, mm. uh, and a possible situation. Whereas on two or, two or three occasions, as you mentioned one, um, it became interesting because there was no real way mm. that she could have known uh, the inside facts that only, for instance, Theresa Kerry would know. Yes, indeed, yes. Um, there's one thing in the room that I've noticed that is very unusual. It's July the 24th, yet there are six large barred fires on the bed here. Yes. Creating what yes. is quite a hot room. Yes. But I found about uh, two-thirds of the way through the conversation, mm. Mm. I was feeling a little bit prickly down the back, rather sort of, uh, uh, rather strange. Isn't it? Mm, I must admit, mm. I mean, I felt fairly excited. Obviously, not knowing what was going to happen. Mm. But who's to know? Well, true. Yes. Mm. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. Right, thank you. You're remembering now from what we've just done, or are yeah, you still getting yeah, I, I, some I sort of Yeah, I sort of feel now we've gone in onto this. What about the piece at the right at the start, where you refer to the nervousness and the fingers? That was so true because it was like this that yeah, whole time. Nervous energy. energy. Yeah, and I felt as though I don't know, but he didn't have a coin. There was something. He's a fiddle with his ring. That's it. He would bring them up off his fingers right. around here. Yeah, because he had to have band-aids on every finger because of the... That's it. And he had a, a lot of rings on his fingers. Yeah, yeah. he'd bring them up here. And Almost, ring around I mean, nearly every finger had a ring on, except when his hands... Yeah. And then he couldn't yeah, even couldn't put one ring all, on. But that, I mean, I got, that was the first thing where I felt... That was him yeah. coming in so close because I felt... And he would tap his foot continually. Yeah, continually. Yeah, yeah. continually. He was doing this. He was full of nervous energy. And he didn't like anybody around him that's right. being calm. He want everybody had to And that's why I had to go and sit there, you see, all the way. I, I felt I had to keep away. That's why I moved you not quite as near. And that was it. So I kept getting this business. Yeah. Because even though the number of shows, and how many hundreds of shows had he yeah. done, but they had to push the him out. He, yeah, would, he couldn't right. walk out, but you saw, yeah. if you, you know, if you were sort of sitting here, you were, yeah. boom, and he was pushed yeah. out, yeah. and he said... Anyway, that, I, that was what I was... Yeah, the time he said, you don't know how you're frightened and laugh at him. Yeah, said, because that's know, what I was... Got over that. that was the thing, I, yeah, I but this was, I feel that yeah. we, we did get him. Yeah, yeah. You see, but it's these things that will, you know, are either proof or not, we're just sort of establishing various little bits here. Mm. You know, this business with the fingers, because uh, I felt we had something in it, it was the rings, the ring? we used to twist them. Was, was it a handful of rings? Yeah, at the beginning. What was a bucket? What was that? Bucket? Yeah. A buggy. Buggy. Oh, buggy. Buggy. Yeah. buggy. Yeah. But this business at the very golf beginning. Buggy. Golf buggy. Like at the very beginning. Electric golf cart. Barry. Oh, really? call a golf this business, I, I could want to keep tugging, in fact, I was rubbing something like this. Yeah, and he used to go like this and not. Because I felt he didn't yeah. have a coin, but he would rub his rings around. Before he went on. Really? Yeah. I mean, is that so? Yeah, yeah, just sat on his feet all the time. Yeah, and, yeah, and, I got, I, I and that's why we were drinking, you see. that was Before he went on, there was always, the last thing he always put down was give, gave somebody the glass. And when he was on the stage, yeah. Charlie was continuously giving him drinks. Yeah, one that, after well, as I was drinking that glass, I went on like this one with his front end. Yeah. <laughs> it was like Alice. I mean, like an Alice that, I didn't know that. I mean, I had no knowledge, no. did you? Well, I had no knowledge. Would that be his general knowledge or not? We had to be at the shows to see it because it wasn't. Really? I think they made a note of uh, reporting Elvis drank two no, glasses would, of later. No, but I'm, I'm aware of the product. It's a typical American root beer type of stuff. What's it called? Gator. 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 It's like a perfume lemonade, you know, yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. It's repulsed yeah. generally. But it tastes, yeah. yeah, once Elvis had, you know how you win a guitar For pick the prep, and you say, you know, before you go on stage, yeah. so he's just yeah. larynx. But he was drinking it on stage the whole time and he had the glass half drunk of Gatorade and he gave it to Pauline. And then Paulie came, look where I've got Elvis's Gatorade. Yeah. So we all had a sip, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you knew what it tasted like. Yeah. So we all went around with it. Is it a sort of aniseed? It's a funny taste. Yeah, it's and I could smell this. Yeah, like a vi you know, karma violet type. Yeah, yeah. scented. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, I, mean, as I was drink, I had to drink this thing, yeah. a glass of water, and I was like, you know. It's Gatorade, we don't need it. No, I don't usually. No, it doesn't come to England. But this, this, this is what I was really wanting to try and find out if we've actually got the 
personality is. It's yeah, because bits I feel straight away with the rings and mm. this was. You That's know. interesting. So are you but with the magazine. That was comics. He read an awful yeah, lot. Comics, with the yeah, I was looking and I thought, that's funny, he didn't really read no, at but he, all. No, but, but with the comics, but he used to keep them all. If you said, oh, we could I have, uh, say, yeah. 1962, number 25? That was my fault. I, oh, I, could, I, I saw this moment. Actually, I was going to ask a question, but you seem okay. to be going so well. And, uh, you know, who, what did he feel about Mike Stone? He forgave him okay. in the end because he wanted to, as much as... It all got blown out of all proportion at one time, and they said that Elvis said that he got to the stage where he wanted to kill him. Mm. But why that was? That's interesting. No, I think you something mentioned. about that about community. Well, why him. that was was because Mike Stone said to Elvis that you're not going to see Lisa. He said that Priscilla was going to ban him from seeing, you know, his yeah. daughter, and Elvis said, "I'll kill you first before you do that." Which is not the way he really did. Yeah, did. yeah he could have. I mean, he, he, he got and you said he had a temper. He had a yeah, terrible, terrible temper. temper. But terrible temper. Yeah. But they, they, also, but they did not. He got stay. very, very close to actually manhandling him. Yeah, he could have. He was in ninth degree. You can only get as high as ten, and Elvis was ninth degree karate. But I mean, you know, I just sort of got the fact that he was as near done it. Mm -hmm. He tempered, got him so. Yeah. I mean, think about the comments. Uh, he didn't, want, he didn't was, want to talk about that actually. Was not he, he didn't like. Like any kind of general knowledge at all, right? No, his yes. cousin told me about that. Don't be lying. Sorry? No, some, his cousin told me. His cousin I don't told know what it was. It was some awful feeling. Probably because I had an awful feeling his pre, about it. Pre, pre his mother. It was a sort of person. Yeah, there was a lot. There was anything you couldn't do. Oh, before his mother died. I mean, just pick this up because it's really just something very interesting, which is that the thing about the comics. Was that his cousin told you? So that is not general knowledge. Yeah. Well, I've never heard of it. I mean, it, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. But never well, got to the yeah. So but how do you feel you know, about that? I mean, uh, what do you feel? But I do feel we must have, we must have got. Elvis. We must have. We must have got it. You think we must have got it? it must have because with the, uh, you know, with so well, many of these right. things. Because I mean, you actually, of all the people here, are going to be the person who. Yeah. Ultimately, is qualified to make that decision. Yeah, that's what I was saying when you stopped. <laughs> when you stopped. I could, you know, the thing is, you can't hold them that long, you see. I mean, it was virtually his. Um, all right, I did this other one, but it was on a different level. It got With extremely the... close this time. What I would call we must do it again, mustn't we? Yeah. On, the, on the point that I picked you up on, could you possibly sort of develop that a little about the, the argument about a music score? Yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Uh, after he died. Yeah, there was Which is the one thing that I picked up on. Yeah, because this, there, he was going on, he got very, he, he seemed to get terribly annoyed about some music score that was going to be either used for the anniversary concert or something being mucked about. You see, I interviewed Kurt Russell and he said that this, nobody would know this at all, he was arguing with the director of the movie because he was not allowed to sing the score and they got Ronnie McDowell to do it yeah. uh, and they, in the end they survived it, was, it, so it was, but there was an argument. Right. There were two, two no, people, there was an week. argument, who was going to sing it or something like that. Well that's exactly it. what he told me. That's it. And that was is done. That, is that known? No, no. Only he would know, I would know, and the director would know. Right, because that's, that's what but he said. He was hopping mad, he was furious. We saw that film last uh, it, six weeks ago. It was filmed in February this year, but certainly not long after I was done. He was furious. And yeah. I'll tell you the weirdest thing, right? I've been. Now, whether this is because I'm sounds orientated or what, I don't know. But I'll give you two things. A friend of mine came back to the States last Friday, and I just popped around to see the guy. Just on the off chance. I didn't know he was coming back that day, right? Gave me a call. I said, oh, look, I'll zip in for 10 minutes. I go around there, he puts his suitcase there. She's coming back from Houston, Texas. He opens the suitcase, and there, staring at me, is an album about a seance. Houdini. Now that's incredible. And the second thing, how does this happen? Right? We're thinking Elvis Presley, whole thing. All day I'm talking about Elvis Presley, seance, organization, etc., etc. And I think, right, I'm going to have a shower and then I'm going to go. And I get into the bathroom and I turn the radio on and there's an Elvis Presley record on the radio. I mean, that absolutely freaked me. Maybe I'm looking for it, but at the same time, you can't help no, I, I, no, I'll tell you one thing. Teresa and myself, we got to Davies early. So we said we'd find a pub. Is this true or not? Yeah. So the minicab driver,
couldn't find a pub anywhere in Garston, Hertfordshire, oh, first of the creek. just over the road. So we went up the road about know? a mile, is it true? Yeah, just past Long Spring. And yep. all of a sudden, uh-huh. Teresa said, there's a pub. We pulled into the pub. This is an hour before we got here. Yeah. We pulled into the pub, we walked in, I said to Teresa, what would you like a drink? She said, oh, I have a dry martini, I said, I have a pint of double diamond. We sat down, and the minute we sat down, what started playing on the jukebox? Are you alone to tonight, followed by It's Now or Never, followed by A Mess of Blues. Well, that's really incredible. But it just struck me as a very weird thing. You know, that, as I say, maybe one, because you're orientated that way, you're looking for it, but at the same time, that is a go system. It's like all factors come together. You see, and there's a lot of thought going out, obviously, for him. Theresa particularly. I mean, we all have, like, I have a general knowledge of it, obviously everybody has, you know, obviously a superstar. But Theresa particularly has that kind of absolute inside sort of knowledge. So you feel that we definitely made some kind of contact with it. We must have, yeah. All right, we have reached the end of the show, but we uh, again, still have I that got, I got to say it. What? The record's over. Yes. Elvis has left the building. <laughs> oh, I just had it. That was my least and my most favorite part when I saw Elvis four times. Because you knew it was over. Yeah. But it was exciting because it was just like somebody really important left. And it was. <laughs> I'm still in awe that you got to see Elvis. Yeah, but you got to see Jerry Lee Lewis. I saw Jerry Lee Lewis. You got to see Jonathan Fred. I saw Jonathan Fred. Yes, you did. I breathed the same room air as Jonathan Fred. Yes. I got to see uh, Prince. I got to see Paul Revere. Yeah. You know, I've been doing radio since 76. Mm-hmm. And during the thing with Jonathan Fred, you were supposed to stand up and ask him questions. And you were prompting me, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't <laughs> talk to him. Was I was a, in fucking awe. He was a childhood hero. I, I he, Absolutely. That. And it was almost the same, although I did talk to him. Almost the same, almost the same thing with uh, Vincent Price. Yeah. But with him, I did talk to him. I couldn't talk to Jonathan. I couldn't think of any questions. I went blank. And this is what I do. I just am, for, will forever be proud of the fact. But that could be because he, he chewed everybody out. He was so disenchanted with how stupid some of the people were in the audience. Well, I will forever be proud of the fact <clears throat> that I broke through the crusty grumpiness of John Carlin. Oh, yes. <laughs> you you became really good buddies. Yeah. But uh, girls would like, oh, Jonathan, I just think you're so... He's, oh, Christ. He's like, do you have a question? Yeah. <laughs> he was not... A, and then they messed up his, his speech because they were supposed to show slides and shit. And the guy messed up that was running the projector and he goes, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and really, if you know his character, he probably could. Probably could.